All right, YouTube. I um opened up my computer. Gonna do a little upgrade to it. This is my uh, 2006 Mac Pro, and I opened it up, and it's quite dirty, as you can see. I've got the camera on it. Put a little light on there, and you can see all the nasty. This is uh, what happens to computers after a certain amount of time. And you can see all that dust and dirt down in there. It's really not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Um, this compartment is really bad. Probably the worst. Probably because it's such a small compartment. Um, this computer never runs hot or anything. It heats up the room, but the fan hardly runs at all. You really can't see them from the shot, but there's two fans on the left side and the front. The back is on the right, front of the computer is on the left. Um, but you can see the main motherboard up in there and uh, the slots, the express slots. I've only got one uh, video card in there. It's a NVIDIA 7800 series. Rather old. And of course the uh, Moto 424 card. Um, but uh, I've got some upgrade components for it. I've got some more RAM for it and I've got uh, another hard drive to put in it. I've got two hard drives in it now. You can see the, the four drive bays. There's drive bay 1, drive bay 2, drive bay 3, and drive bay 4. There's a terabyte drive in drive bay 4 and over in drive bay 1 there is a 500 gigabyte drive. So I'm going to put another terabyte drive probably in drive bay 2 and I've got um, 8 gigs of RAM, two 4 gig sticks to put in there. I've got uh, four more slots for RAM so in the future I'll be able to put a couple more sticks in there but right now we're going to stick with that. So uh, the first thing I have to do is uh, clean out this computer. Uh, I'm not going to take it apart and like some people do I know that's probably the best thing to do but this computer isn't super old and it's not super dirty. I mean it's dirty down the bottom there. It is pretty dirty but I think I can uh, suck out most of that dust and dirt. Uh, you can uh, use a uh, those cans of air but I don't like using those because they always have moisture in them and although it wouldn't hurt it if you just you know let it dry out before you power it up again but uh, um, I'm just going to take a vacuum cleaner and uh, very carefully uh, suck out all of the air, probably use my uh, my paintbrush that I've never used to paint anything with. I just bought it brand new and I use it to dust off my components. And it's not one of those plastic bristle brushes. It's uh, a real camel hair brush. So it's not going to put up a lot of static or anything. But I have uh, unplugged everything from the computer. So we don't have any electricity touching it at all. So uh, we'll come back here in a little bit after I get it cleaned out and we'll see the difference. Okay, here's the new hard drive and I've already attached it to the shuttle. These little shuttles are ingenious. Um, all you do is you, it just slides out, this part slides out and the four holes on the bottom of the drive, um, these, these screws right here are permanently attached to the shuttle. And you just put the screws in there, get them all started first and then tighten them down. They don't have to be super tight, just you know, tighten them down until it's you know, nice and snug. And then um, the shuttle just slides in like that and it, the plugs are in the bottom, uh, in the bot actually on the other opposite side of the computer itself. Okay, so you can see there where I pulled the shuttle out, the other two bays, one on uh, bay one and bay three are on the left and right and um, down in there in the bottom I don't know if you can see it from this but there's a socket and that's where uh, these go in that's where it mates up Just stick it down there and then the, the uh, power plugs in and also the uh, data port it all goes in nice and neatly no wires no nothing if you look down in there you, I think you can see it on the camera the uh, mating thing is on the left and uh, your pins are on the left here and you can also look at the number on the shuttle itself bay number two it's always going to be on bottom right and just snip it down in there 
once you get it in there, you know, take your hands like that on either side of the machine of the machine, you know, holding it, and just you know gently give it a little push, and it goes home. And that's all there is to it to putting a hard drive in a Macintosh G5 or Mac Pro. It's a very simple process. Now the RAM is a different story. <laughs> we'll get to the RAM in just a minute here. Now we've got the uh, hard drive in there, the third hard drive I've put in this computer. Um, we're going to put some extra RAM in it. So the way this computer is put together, um, you saw how easily the you know put that shuttle in and out. That was really simple uh, doing that. You know, no wires or anything like that. Just mates right up to the plug that's on the uh, on the motherboard there. Or it's actually not on the motherboard. The plug is actually mounted to the frame, and the wires go from the the back side of the uh, frame where it's mounted and run into the motherboard. But the way the RAM is uh, on the motherboard, uh, it's probably going to be impossible for you to see it with this camera. Just to, the resolution isn't good enough. But underneath those uh, RAM stick holders, there, there's a, some writing. It says DM, DMMR um, riser, RAM riser, and what it is is these two boards here that each have uh, see they have four slots each those two boards are uh, plugged in to the motherboard kinda like the way up here on top the way the mother the video card the express slots are it's a slot kinda like that but it's a little bit bigger and I'm I'm guessing uh, on these riser boards it just uh, parallel or uh, series is the uh, the RAM sticks into that riser. I'll take one out here real quick for you and you can see the riser where it comes in. So uh, here we go. I have to put the flashlight now. You might not be able to see very well. but Okay, see? Real easily. See, there's the uh, that's where it plugs in there, like, and like I said, it looks kind of like uh, a video card slot, uh, the, the side of a video card where you plug it in the slot. And there's your chips where you plug in your RAM chips. And uh, let me put this down, and I'll zoom in real close to the uh, where this plugs in, and you can see uh, the bottom part of the motherboard. Okay, see, I've tipped it this back now, and you can see, you see, it says DIM and riser. B. So that's the one on the bottom, I guess. This one on the top is probably A. So, uh, you know, that's where that little riser plugs in. And see, it's not very dirty back in there. I did a, a, a pretty good sweep uh, in there with the, uh, there's a few pieces of dust bunny, but not much, with the vacuum cleaner, uh, very carefully. I didn't, uh, you know, jar it up against any uh, the components or anything. But these motherboards are pretty solid. These, these circuit boards are pretty solid. I've seen pictures, uh, videos of people taking these computers apart and uh, taking them completely apart and taking motherboards and video cards and all kinds of stuff and putting them in a bathtub with some degreaser and just taking you know toothbrushes to them, just scrubbing the heck out of them. And you know it doesn't hurt them. You know as long as you know you can do that if you've got a really dirty computer. Um, this computer's not too bad. Like I said, it hasn't been used a whole lot. Um, but there was some dust in it, so I just took the vacuum cleaner and sucked all the dust out. Uh, there's an, a big an extension nozzle on the end of my vacuum cleaner. It's plastic. But uh, if you do have an extra dirty, I mean, if it's just so filthy, caked on, dirt, and nasty, and, and, you, and you just can't get it cleaned off with, uh, with those you know, air things or uh, you know, a vacuum cleaner like I did, uh, you can just take them completely apart and get some some degreaser soft bristle toothbrush or something and just you know clean them out real good uh, search YouTube there's several videos I've seen of people showing step by step of how to do it uh, and you just have to let it dry out really good alright here's my RAM um, this is uh, two sticks four gigs each came in a nice little package like this and it is the fully buffered and it's got these little heat sinks on it. I'll take one out and you can see. Uh, that's one thing that, see, it's, I haven't upgraded this computer very much at all. In fact, the only thing I've done is put a, an extra hard drive in it. And that's been several years ago. I bought, I got this computer in 2006. 
and I put that uh, hard drive in in I think like 08, 2008, something like that, maybe 2009. Um, and I, I knew, you know, this is 2014, and I knew I said, you know, there's got to be a lot of stuff going on in between those years, you know, five, six years, whatever it is. Um, so I, I went and did a lot of research. I called a couple of uh, uh, Apple stores. I didn't want to just call one Apple store and talk to one guy. I wanted to talk to a couple of different guys to to make sure to make sure that I was doing you know doing this right because I didn't want to have to spend money twice, which I hate doing. Sometimes I do it, but uh, I don't like to do that. Um, but uh, all of uh, all the information I gathered. Let me get a little bit closer. You can see that. Um, but all the information I gathered, um, you want to get the RAM sticks that have these metal things. I'm um, see this silver part on here. Um, those are heat sinks, uh, and they help keep your RAM from overheating. And heat is the worst thing for a computer, uh, especially RAM, especially RAM and hard drives. And if you got solid state hard drive, wow, you really got to keep that cool. But um, I saw, you know, I did some, you know, like I said, did some research. Did some, I found lots of different manufacturers with all kinds of super deals. And most of the really inexpensive ones, the ones that were like, uh, let's see, I paid uh, like 45 bucks for these 8 gigs. You know, so that's like 20-some bucks a stick. But I found some that were like, you know, fifteen, nineteen dollars, you know, for the same amount. I'm like, yeah, what's the deal with that? So I looked at it and they didn't have these uh metal heat sinks on. Uh, and that makes a huge difference, especially if you've got, you know, a computer like this one, a workstation for audio. Um so it you know, it's got a lot of uh stuff going on in it, so it's gonna get warm. Um, so th this is really important to have, you know, don't skimp on stuff like that. Let me get this open and we'll come back. Alright, got this open and here's the, uh, here's the RAM sticks. Pretty straightforward, you know, RAM, like you've seen. Anyway, I got these at, off of Amazon.com. Like I said, I I paid for like forty five bucks for the four uh, full eight gigs, and the hard drive I paid like eighty bucks. All right, here is the um, here's the one uh, shut. I guess this you could call this a shuttle too, like the hard drive um, riser. Call it a riser. That's what it says on the motherboard. But here's the first uh, riser I pulled out. And uh, match it up here. So it looks like it goes on just like that. So uh, put it in there and see how it goes. You got these little snap things. You pull them back. Set this in here. There. Open in. Both sides snapped in. I don't know if you can see that or not, but that's snapped in. It went in that little tip in the side, and the same thing over here. That's one I'm in. There was when I took this stick out right here, there was a piece of where it fits in the plastic there. It was fit real tight, and a little piece of plastic popped out too. It was that I just saw that, and it was actually still stuck in the side of the ram stick. So, if you take these out and it's in the same type of container that that was in, you want to make sure that uh, there's no plastic sticking in there. Look it over really good. I'm gonna do the same thing with this other one. Snaps in, nice and good. Now we've got eight more gigs of RAM on this. Looks like it's seated good. Nice and level. And this way. Nice and level. Get a little 
little bit closer here. It's nice and level in there. Look at the other side. Nice and even. There's little tangs on the side. Are all the way in those little slots on both sides and they're hooked in so it is properly seated. And so you can see, cost and hot surface right there. What that's going to do, it's going to pull the heat away from the actual electronics in the RAM. And it's going to dissipate it. And now we're going to, I'm going to stick this back in. I'm going to relocate the camera. Along the side, along the side right there, there's uh, little slots on both sides. I don't know if you can see that. You should be able to see it, but if you can't, trust me, they're there. There's little slots, and they line up perfectly with the mating surface to that. I guess that wire right there is out of the way. Yeah, it's back out of the way. Anytime you're doing stuff like this, you want to do things like that when you Put them back in, and it just slid down in there. Okay, now I have a couple extra gigs. I told you I did some research after, because um, it had been so many years since I had upgraded a computer. I did this research to figure out, you know, um, number one about that RAM, uh, the cheap RAM, doesn't come with those heat sinks, so you could run a, a, a good possibility of burning up your RAM if you're really taxing your computer, which being as this is a DAW, it's a workstation, there's a good chance that's going to happen, so uh, I made sure to pay, I paid the extra money. It was only like twice as much. It wasn't the the cheap sticks were like twenty bucks for for eight gigs, and the sticks that I bought with the heat sinks on them, they were like I said they were like forty five. So it was like you know twenty twenty five bucks more. Not really a whole lot, you know, when you consider this whole computer. When I actually bought it, I paid like four or five thousand dollars for this whole computer when I first bought it. Um, I could replace it for a lot less than that, but uh, Probably uh, twelve, thirteen hundred, fifteen hundred bucks. I could probably replace the entire computer if something happened to it. But um, well, like I said before, I don't like to buy stuff twice. Um, everybody's human; we make mistakes, of course. And sometimes that does happen, but I don't like to do that if I don't have to. But what I did, well, uh, as far as the hard drives go, I did some research. Um, I found a couple of videos on YouTube and actually talked to the the guys at the uh, the Apple Store, and there's a couple of websites uh, with a bunch of audio engineers that uh, I go to sometimes, it's like a forums. And uh, I was like, you know, what about these new hard drives? You know, it's all state hard drives, and they're like, you know, yeah, they're nice and everything, and you can get lots of rewrites on them. There's no problem with that, but uh, they're really expensive, and when you're working with audio and even video too even worse you need a lot of space you really need a lot of space and uh, it would be quite expensive to get a large uh, hard drive for solid state so I got the uh, just a one terabyte it's a Western Digital it's a Western Digital Black which was the highest uh, performing drive they had uh, like I said being as it's a DAW uh, audio workstation I want speed so this is a 7200 RPM hard drive. Um, would have been nice to have a 10,000 RPM or even a 15,000 RPM, but uh, they are really expensive, and because not because they're so much better, but because there's not as many of them around. The supply and demand thing, um, they're harder to come by, so people are like hoarding them, I guess. But uh, this other one over here, let's move the camera. This uh, this is the one that I put in like two years after I got the computer so probably in 09 this is just the green this is the uh, the lowest price one they had but actually I think I paid like 120 bucks for that 
it's a one terabyte as well I think I paid like 120 bucks for that drive and it was the uh, 5500 RPM I do believe and this the black over there it's 7200 RPMs and it was actually less it was uh, like 80 bucks but that just that's just because of the solid state drive drives coming out and the competition has changed a little bit um, so if you've got a computer like this and you want to upgrade it um, just be, just because you want to keep it you know this is an excellent running machine the first like three or four years I had this machine I didn't use it you know it's set in storage because I had uh, G4 Quicksilver that was still running great you know still no problems with it and that's still a good machine there's nothing wrong with it but um, when I started using the internet more with Macintosh when the internet became more friendly to Macintosh I said to myself, well, you know, let's uh, put the Mac Pro. I'd had this computer for a couple of years. I said, let's go ahead and put this Mac Pro on the Internet. And it actually does fine on the Internet. You know, now, you know, you know the Internet is, you know, for everybody, everywhere, anywhere, anytime, um, with uh, Wi-Fi and everything. But uh, I don't use Wi-Fi here at the house. I hardwire my computers just for performance issues. That's the only reason. That's the only reason why I do it. There's nothing wrong with Wi-Fi. Uh, it's just you don't get the bandwidth and the speed that you get with the hardwired. And we've got this the Super Turbo uh, Time Warner cable, you know, Super Extra Turbo, so it's really fast, you know, lots of bandwidth. Um, okay, so we got the hard drive in now, and we've got the extra RAM in. So I'm going to uh, work with uh, the next thing that I've got, which is... Drum roll, please. Yeah, look at that. Snow Leopard, hey! At the same time I was doing the uh, research for the hard drive and the RAM, I uh, actually, what happened was um, I just happened to be looking on Amazon. This has been maybe uh, six, eight months ago. Looking on Amazon. Uh, at operating systems, Macintosh operating systems, and I just happened to stumble upon this. Uh, Mac OS X 10, OS X Snow Leopard, operating system 10 Snow Leopard, um, which just happens to be, and it was only, you know, 20 bucks. You know, pretty cheap for operating system. Um, and it just happens to be uh, about a year and a half ago when, um, what is it, uh, Mountain Lion first came out, or they were talking about Mountain Lion coming out. Um, that was probably closer to two years ago, but when it was, you know, everybody was talking about, you know, Mountain Lion, the new operating system for Mac. When that start, first started happening, I, that was when I started thinking, I'm going to have to think about upgrading the operating system, because I'm still running Tiger in this thing. Uh, the highest version of Tiger, just before Panther came out. Uh, I'm running OS uh, 10.4, I think it is, or 10.14, uh, or something like that, or 3.4. But it was the last uh, upgrade to Tiger you could get before you got to Panther. Um, and I, I knew right then, you know, when I heard about that new system, you know, that was, uh, you know, it's several, several generations. I said, you know, I'm going to start having issues with the Internet and, you know, hardware may be problems. Uh, this, that, and the other. And while this computer's primary purpose is an audio workstation, I'm not totally dependent on the internet, but I have been using this computer more and more for the internet, and there's a lot of neat things that you can do for audio now on the internet. And I am going to have to upgrade uh, Digital Performer, which is my main recording software. Uh, I am going to upgrade that to uh, DP8 as soon as I can. Uh, that's going to be the most expensive upgrade. It's probably going to cost 150 bucks. Um, but as soon as I can do that, I will. But when I first heard about Mountain Lion coming out, I knew that it wasn't going to be long before I was going to start having issues with the internet with Tiger. So I called the Apple Store, and like I said, this was you know two two years ago, and they said, yeah, um, you can upgrade that computer. Your your uh, Mac Pro, your 2006 Mac Pro, you can update it up to Snow Leopard. 
and that's it because of the motherboard. Oops, that was a flashlight hitting the floor. Because of the motherboard hardware issues. And that's the only problem I've ever had with Macintosh. Uh, and, you know, Windows does it too. Windows does it too. They make it so your operating systems will eventually have to be upgraded, which it's just it's just a uh, the way they operate and the way the how about the way the operation <laughs> the way the operating system operates that's a funny one but uh, the way the architecture of the uh, operating system itself is set up and the hard the hardware on your motherboard or possibly one of the daughter boards that being uh, your video card or your uh, audio card or your uh, uh, RAM or your um, maybe even the way they interface whoops excuse me didn't mean to hit the camera uh, the way they interface together possibly um, you will eventually have to do it but uh, the guy told me he said yep you have got to go to Snow Leopard and that's it as far as you can go you'll have to get a, a new uh, a completely new system if you want to go beyond Snow Leopard which okay that's great you know I should be able to get another uh, five or six years good use out of this computer as long as nothing physically happens to it uh, out of the operating system you know I should get a good enough five or six years out of it before I will have to upgrade again and by then this computer will be ten years old and it's going to be a dedicated machine if I even still use it you know I might you know get rid of it it's done lost a lot of its value now so I might keep it but anyway um, we'll come back here in a little bit uh, with the tail end of this uh, uh, Mac Pro upgrade 2006 Mac Pro upgrade and uh, we'll talk about the operating system a little more okay talking about uh, upgrading this computer uh, I've uh, I started the computer, and I put uh, put the Snow Leopard disk in, and then I rebooted, and I'm booting from the disk, which uh, you hold down C. I believe you hold down C when you're restarting with the disk in it, and it'll restart from the disk instead of the computer itself. Okay, there we go. I know you hear some noise in the background. That's my air conditioner. <clears throat> okay. It's asking me what language. Let me move this a little bit closer. Okay, so when you boot from the disk, you get this screen here. Let's go to Utilities. At the top, Disk Utility. Let's see if that new hard drive is in here. For the non-Macintosh people, or the people that aren't savvy with Macintosh, um, and this is actually, this is true with, with any computer, really. Um, when you're upgrading an operating system to a new, a completely new operating system like I'm doing here, I'm going from Tiger to uh, Snow Leopard, the best way to do it is to get an entire new hard drive and this is what I really like about Macintosh is the, uh, the disk um, you boot to the disk and you get this utility thing here um, I'm not savvy enough with uh, PCs you might be able to do it from a Windows uh, main disk too uh, I'm not sure because I haven't done as much uh, uh, Windows uh, upgrading as I have uh, Macs. Usually when I upgrade a, a Windows operating system I buy a whole new computer because uh, Windows computers aren't really expensive. Um, the last Windows computer I bought I only spent like $800 on it. You know, it wasn't a lot of money. To to buy a whole new Mac, a whole new Mac Pro would cost, you know, several thousand dollars, probably three or four thousand dollars to do it right. You can get them cheaper but uh, it's going to be a bare bone system. Um, but anyway, um, when you're installing a new, completely new uh, operating system, you really want to get a new hard drive, slap that bad boy in there, 
and then restart on the on the uh, disc and pull up, pull up this utility here and you can go and uh, format your individual drives uh, like you can see here here is the original drive that I had right here the one that came with the computer a 500 uh, gig drive and what you see I you know partitioned it off to two 250 there's the Mac and there's the Windows one because this is actually a dual boot computer I've got Windows XP on this other drive here you see it's untitled because I don't have Windows on now I'm running the Mac side of it um, but I've never actually never ever used the maybe one or two times I've used the uh, Windows side but mostly because I have Windows computers, a whole new Windows computers, I, I don't use this side, so I probably shouldn't have done that. But uh, you know, it was a, a option that I that I uh, opted to get. But uh, you know, 250 on this drive, the Mac drive, and and 250 on this Windows drive, and then I put that other drive in that uh, Western Digital Green drive that we looked at a minute ago. And I partitioned it off into three different drives. Um, this video save is a 500 gig, and the DP Digital Performer Bounce. Uh, the way you uh, that's a performance issue of uh, Digital Performer, the program, my main recording software program. When you bounce uh, files to disk, which you have to do quite a bit when you're uh, um, when you're mastering, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm, you see I still got this cold. Um, when you're mastering uh, your files, when you're taking them from uh, the multi-track format to a, a two-track stereo format, you have to bounce it to disk, and it, it uh, formats it properly. And uh, the best way to do that is to save the file in an individual hard drive, that which is what I've done here. So when I'm saving my files. Uh, off of Digital Performer, um, my recording software, I will save to that. That's a 250 drive. And when you actually save your individual uh, uh, projects on Digital Performer, I save it to an individual drive too. It's just the architecture of the, here we go with architecture again, the software architecture of the program. Um, I actually found that out. You don't have to do this, but uh, uh, the main tech that I know at, at Marco Unicorn, Motu, the company that makes the software, he said, do this. Make two partitions and uh, make one for your bounces and one for your saves. And like I said, those are 250, 250, and 500. So that, that green drive, Western Digital Drive, is nothing but a storage. It's nothing but for storage. The main operating system is actually on the first drive, 500 gig drive. Okay, so here's that new drive that I put in. It's another terabyte. Now, what I want to do is I want to partition that drive, and I'm going to do something similar here that I did with uh, the first uh, terabyte drive. Um, in fact, I'm probably going to do exactly the same. But since I'm not, um, since I'm not going to be getting uh, the new version of Digital Performer. I'm probably, and I've still got some, a good amount of room on this one right here. This is the most important one, the bounce one. I've still got a good amount of room on that, and actually there's a good amount of room on that too. This The video one is getting kind of full, but I can always go and delete stuff because most of my video is junk. But my audio files, I really need to save those because they're quite important. Um, <clears throat> but what I'll do is uh, do something similar. Okay, <laughs> take four. Um, I had to rethink this out a little bit because I actually want the operating system on a drive by itself too. So um, I was going to originally just do the same thing I did over here with this other drive. Make one for uh, two for digital performer, one for video. But then I said, well, no, wait a minute. The main reason for me to upgrade this is so I can use the Internet a lot easier, which is the main problem I was having with Tiger. 
So I've changed my mind about that. I'm going to make four drives, four partitions in the one drive. So I'm going to make one partition that is going to be that is going to be for the Mac OS we'll call it SL for Snow Leopard <clears throat> and we're gonna make that 150 gigs that should be enough for now um, this next one we're gonna call this one Mac oh no wait a minute DP save two We'll put another S S L there too, so we'll know that's for Snow Leopard. For the, and we'll make that one two hundred gigs. No, we'll make that one a hundred gigs too. Because the save files are are they're not that big really okay the second one we are calling Mac DP save 2 SL everything I'm gonna put uh, tags on everything on this drive SL for Snow Leopard um, and we're gonna make it 150 gigabyte for that one the third one we're going to save for Mac. Let me get a little closer here. DP. Bounce. And let's make that a capital P. B O U N C E. Two. And again, SL for Snow Leopard. And we're going to make that also a 150 gigabyte drive and this fourth one okay seeing as I have 550 left we're going to enlarge because I want this video one to be 500 now we're going to make it 450 I'm going to enlarge this one by, let's see, 450. Oh, wait a minute. Let's go back and name this one Mac V I D O. Video save <coughs> to S L for Snow Leopard. Okay. I've got some space left. Okay, so we've got uh, 250, 150, so that's 400, right? Yeah, 400. Another 150, 550. And 450 over here, so that leaves. I'm going to take this down to 400. 400 gigs. I see that just keeps making this one bigger and bigger. Which is probably a good idea, but I want to make these a little bit bigger. We're going to make these 175. So that makes that one 400. The video which makes sense because a video takes up about ten times more space than a uh, 
you know, because I, uh, these, pro okay, let me, uh, real quickly, um, these programs, these aren't just MP3 and um, compressed uh, JPEGs. <laughs> these are full audio, full 44.1. That's what I run at. I can run it a lot higher than that, but uh, that takes up more space and higher resolution. I can go up to like uh, 96K. Um, but I'm just going at 44.1 um, on my audio and video, full video. Uh, now when I save, uh, save something for YouTube like this, it's definitely uh, always going to go down to a, uh, 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 what do you call it, MPEG. It's going to go down to an MPEG file, um, which means the audio is also going to be uh, MP3s. So. Uh, and I say, but but when I originally put it on the computer, the original stuff that comes straight off of my handy cam here, that's full video, you know, it's full uh, HD video. It's not uh, uh, 1080i or 1280i, whatever it is, not the super HD, but it's uh, I think uh, it's it's almost a thousand. It's like 980 or nine something, um, because this is. Uh, tape base it's not a digital recorder um, it's not quite as good as the stuff that's out now but um, it's still full video it's not compressed um, so it takes up a lot of space so I, I do want that video f uh, video partition to be a lot bigger than the audio ones but I've got a little 250 is probably too much so I'm gonna put I should make these 200 each I'm going to make this one 200. The save. I'm going to make it 200. That makes that 225, 200. <clears throat> okay, there we go. 175 on the, on the bounce. Okay, so now we got a pretty good uh, partition drive here. We got 225 on the main drive. We got 200 on the digital performer save. 175 on the DP bounce, digital performance bounce to disk, and we've got 400 on uh, the video save for when I do upgrade to a better video. So um, next, let's see what happens next. I apply these. Okay, I got the uh, new partition set. Um, the, I had to put a new tape in the camera. This one ran out. <laughs> this is going to be a lot of edited stuff taken off of there because there was a lot of me meandering and stuff. But um, okay, so basically what I did is um, this is the new this is the new drive, the one I just put in earlier in the video, and I've set it into four different partitions uh, okay now I got out of that disk utility okay here's all the drives that I have uh, this one right here is the the Windows one with the Windows XP installed on it you see I can't use it because I am on the the um, Macintosh side of the computer and here is um let's see let's go to the ones we already got okay this one here is the one that's on Tiger now that I'm currently using the old operating system it's got 50 set 56 57 gigs free on a 575 total drive and uh, there's the eight the uh, the regular the first drive that came with the computer, the 250 gig drive that I had set up just for uh, Mac OS uh, Tiger. Um, and it's only got 26 gigs free, so I'm definitely not going to put it there. There's DP Save, uh, 60, 166 
160 gigs free of 214 bounce so it looks like this the, the uh, save takes up more space than bounce so I might want to go back in there which I probably will and put a little bit more space in the save which I think I did but I probably won't need nearly as much space for the bounce files um, and here's the drives I just put in uh, there's the uh, the video save the big one it's 400 gigs Mac OS that's where I want to install right there I definitely want to install in that drive because I've called it Mac OS SL for Snow Leopard so we're gonna select this drive and click install and now it's going to install um, the new operating system Snow Leopard onto that new partition that I made just a minute ago okay the install is complete it's asking me to restart so we're going to restart and hopefully it's going to restart us to the new uh, operating system I hope if not I'll have to restart again and uh, hit the uh, the Apple the key to the command key to boot to the to let me choose which disk to boot to now I'm gonna find out if this uh, twenty some dollar software was uh, actually the full version or if it was just the uh, operating system itself I wasn't really sure because it doesn't say on the package if it comes with all the extras like iMovie and all that stuff or it could just be a stripped down version of the uh, operating system itself which still is you know no big deal if, it, if it's not if it's just the operating system I'll be happy and that is definitely the new operating system because it is passing audio through the built-in speaker and not through the uh, 424 card I'll have to set it up that way I'll have to change that register it wants me to register U.S. Okay, we, I put in a bunch of information that it wanted to see, my personal information that it wanted to see, and I created an account with uh, Apple and it connected to Apple and communicated all the information and uh, I don't have my old Apple keyboard broke a long time ago and I've got a, a replacement to Windows keyboard so I've got to go through and okay it wants me the right side of the shift key it's gonna be the Z key press the key immediately on the left of the shift key on the right side and that is going to be the question mark slash English about this Mac okay here we go I'm going to edit out what I just showed here a second ago uh, under hardware it's got the serial number for the computer on there I don't want that on the internet but um, the uh, uh, RAM that I installed is working properly. I've got 11 gigs now, which is pretty good. Pretty good amount of RAM. Um, there's my uh, DVD drive that came with the computer originally. Built-in audio, okay. I've got to go and configure this uh, so it uh, passes audio through the 424 card 
for the Motu unit that I've got hooked up to the speakers instead of the uh, computer itself. But um, there we go. We've got uh, we've got Snow Leopard working on this computer. Um, we've got uh, let's see. Let's go to memory. There is the. I still got two empty slots there. Okay, there we have it. We've got uh, Snow Leopard on its own partition on this computer. Um, I can still boot to the other uh, drives, the old drives, if I want to do some recording on DP5. Um, like I said, I haven't upgraded to DP8 yet. Uh, when I can, I will, and I will install it on this uh, this drive here. Um, so uh, that's about it.